you know that sometimes people become so obsessed with their own selfishness that they lose all sense of right and wrong? If you think that crime rates are higher among the less educated and lower among the more educated, then you are mistaken. In fact, highly educated people can commit crimes in very clean and terrifying ways. Hello, friends. How are you all? Today, we are going to discuss the Patel family case. This story begins in the Peyton district of Gujarat, where a tehsil called Sidpur is located. In that tehsil lies a village called Kalyan. In 2019, the Patel family resided in Kalyan village. The head of the family was Narendra Bai Patel, with his wife Madhu Ben Patel. They lived with their two children, Jigar Patel and Kanari Patel. Jigar was married to Bhumi Patel, and they had a daughter named Mahai. Narendra Bai Patel was an industrialist with an iron and steel business in Ahmedabad. His son Jigar had joined his father's business and was helping to grow it. The daughter, Kanari Patel, was also well-educated, working as a dentist in a hospital. Bumi, Jigar's wife, was also a dentist. This was a well-educated and wealthy family with no shortage of anything, and they were leading a happy life. Then came October-November 2018. During these months, 34-year-old Jigar Patel started to feel unwell. He began experiencing strange restlessness, frequent fits, and dry throat. His eyesight was also deteriorating, making it difficult for him to see. He couldn't eat properly, which led to rapid weight loss. His parents took him to the hospital in Ahmedabad, where doctors conducted tests, but nothing was found. Jigar had no disease. His symptoms were new and unusual. Initially healthy, he was now in a poor state, but medical tests revealed nothing. The doctors prescribed medication, saying he would get better. Over time, however, Jigger's condition only worsened. He kept a bottle of glucose water with him for energy, as he had no desire to eat. Seeing his condition, his family became increasingly worried. After consulting several doctors in Ahmedabad's major hospitals, four different doctors performed numerous tests, but nothing was diagnosed. Jigger's condition continued to worsen over seven or eight months, weakening him to the point where his vision was almost gone. On May 4, 2019, the family, including Narendra Bai Patel, his wife Madhu Ben Patel, daughter Kanari, son Jigger, Jigger's wife Bhumi, and 14-month-old granddaughter Mahai, went to visit Narendra's elder brother in Patan. They decided to go to their ancestral village the next day for a ritual at the family deity's temple, hoping for Jigger's recovery. However, that day, Jigger suffered another severe fit. His sister, Kanari, suggested that he take some medicine she had, hoping it might help. Reluctantly, Jigger took it, but his condition worsened even more. He ran to their car, hoping to go to the hospital, but couldn't find the car keys. Calling out to his family for help, everyone scrambled to find the keys, and they rushed him to the hospital. By the time they arrived, Jigger had already lost consciousness. Doctors checked him and, to everyone's shock, announced that he had passed away. His family was devastated. They believed Jigger had suffered a heart attack due to his weakness and declined a post-mortem, considering it a natural death. A few days after Jigger's passing, on May 30th, his wife Bumi started experiencing similar symptoms. She, too, began having fits and feeling weak. Alarmed, the family rushed Bumi to the hospital. Shortly after Bumi was taken to the hospital, Kanari noticed that little Mahai was also having fits, and she rushed to the hospital immediately, where Bumi was admitted. Narendra Bai and Kanari also went along. At the hospital, the doctor examined the child, but after a while, delivered the sad news that the baby girl had passed away. Within a month, the family had faced two deaths, one of a 34-year-old father and the other of a 14-month-old daughter. Everyone in the family was shocked and devastated. Bumi, the mother of the baby girl Mahai, was also in critical condition. Somehow, the doctors managed to stabilize her. The doctor suggested a post-mortem for the baby girl, but the family refused. Mahai had been born prematurely, and they thought she wouldn't survive, but she somehow pulled through. She was very weak from the start, requiring medication, and they assumed this weakness led to her death. The family suspected no foul play, so they didn't go for a post-mortem. Instead of cremation, they buried the child. Bumi, the daughter-in-law, remained unwell, having lost both her husband and daughter within a month, leaving her feeling as if her entire family was gone. 
Meanwhile, Narendra Bai's mind was troubled. He told his daughter-in-law, You should go back to your parents. Staying here may not be good for you. Following this, Bhumi's father came and took her home. Narendra Bai observed the family carefully. Everyone was deeply saddened, sitting in despair with tears in their eyes. However, Kanari Patel appeared unfazed, laughing on the phone with friends, moving happily around the house, eating, drinking, going out, and spending time with friends, showing no sign of grief over her brother and niece's deaths. That day, when the baby had fallen ill and they were taking her to the hospital, Kanari showed no concern and was even seen laughing, as if it were all a joke. After a couple of days, her father couldn't hold back and asked Kinari, I've been observing you for days now. Don't you feel any sorrow over your brother and niece's deaths? Or are you somehow responsible for them? The father hadn't expected his daughter's response. Kinari stood up and said unflinchingly, You're right. I'm the one who killed my brother and niece, and I was going to kill my sister-in-law too, but you sent her to her parents' house. Hearing this, her father was devastated, his world turned upside down. He was faced with a cruel choice, stand for justice for his son and granddaughter or protect his daughter from jail. He immediately decided to go to the police, reporting everything. His daughter didn't resist his decision, feeling no remorse for her actions. Five days after his granddaughter's death, Narendra Bai went to the B Division police station in Peyton District and filed a complaint against his daughter Kanari Patel, detailing how she had confessed to the murders. The police then arrested Dr. Kanari Patel, who confessed on camera, explaining how and why she committed these crimes. Both Kanari and her brother had grown up together with immense love and care from their parents, with no shortage in upbringing. After Jigger completed his studies, he started managing family responsibilities, assisting in his father's business, and taking care of the household. Kanari, too, became a dentist after her studies. Though there had been love between the siblings and childhood, Conflicts began to arise as they grew up. Kanari felt she wasn't treated fairly by the family, that her parents didn't give her enough importance, and everyone ignored her. These thoughts sowed resentment toward her brother, leading her to feel jealous of him. When Jigger married Bumi, who was also a dentist, Kanari felt her importance in the family dwindled further, sparking professional competition and jealousy. She sometimes argued with Bumi, feeling overlooked in the family and career alike. With time, jealousy turned into resentment. When Jigger's daughter Mahai was born, Kanari's envy increased, as visitors always inquired about them, never about her. Her father had a substantial property, and Kanari, with resentment and now greed, thought if her brother and sister-in-law were out of the picture, all her problems would be solved, leaving her the sole heir. Though there was no favoritism in reality, Kanari was blinded by her own misperceptions leading her to devise a plan to eliminate her brother and his family. Being a dentist, she had knowledge of chemicals and started researching slow poisons, lethal plants, and toxins that could gradually damage organs. She found a suitable poison in a plant seed, easily available in rural areas with dense vegetation. She ordered those seeds. Now, how would the auto driver know that these seeds are a slow poison? She must have thought she was ordering them to plant. The cunning person thought that she wouldn't give poison to both her brother and sister-in-law together, as that would raise suspicion. So, she decided to first poison her brother. Whenever her brother came home after work, she would be there before him, having finished all her tasks. Being a family member, she knew exactly when he would leave and when he would return. So, whenever her brother would come home, she would bring him water. She had already boiled the seeds, strained them, and cooled them down. Whenever her brother asked for water, she would give him that poison water. Slowly, the slow poison began to show its effects. Her brother started feeling ill, his eyesight worsened, his digestion was disturbed, and he started feeling weak. He went to the doctor, but the cause of his illness could not be identified. To boost his energy, he would drink water with glucose. His sister, Kanari Patel, would prepare this glucose water but it was the same water where the plant seeds had been boiled. So, he would drink poisoned water as his energy drink, and his condition continued to deteriorate. In March 2019, Kanari Patel bought potassium cyanide. Although this is not easily available, it can be found with jewelers and is used to polish gold or for gold plating. Kanari, being a doctor, knew exactly where to get such substances. 
She befriended a jeweler and gained his trust. One day, she told him that she had a patient who needed gold teeth and required potassium cyanide for it. This way, she obtained cyanide from the jeweler. However, jewelers do not give large quantities, so she only received the amount needed for gold teeth. Kanari thought this amount was too little, but she couldn't ask for more. She applied the same friendship strategy with another jeweler, collected cyanide from there as well, and soon had a significant quantity. Now, Kanari wanted to test how quickly the cyanide could kill a person. To do this, she experimented with the poison on a spider and an ant. The piece was kept in a crystalline solid or granular form, like sugar and salt. Here, the spider and ants instantly died after touching cyanide, which made Kanari happy. She then arranged empty capsules from a medical friend, filled them with potassium cyanide using a carving spatula, and packed them. A carving spatula is a tool typically used by dentists. She had several yellow and red capsules, all of which were filled with cyanide and stored in a plastic box. She would mix glucose in the water of the plant seeds and give it to her brother. She would watch him suffer daily, yet she felt no pity. She didn't know how long the slow poison would take to work. Kinari wanted to finish the matter quickly. Seven to eight months had passed. On May 4th, when the Patel family went to the elder father's house and were about to go to the family goddess temple, Kinari had kept the capsules ready. On the morning of May 5th, after drinking the glucose water, her brother's health deteriorated, so the sister said she had medicine for him and insisted that he take it. He refused, but she forced the capsule into his mouth and gave him the slow poison-laced glucose water. As soon as he took the capsule, his health deteriorated. He ran towards the car, but Kanari had already stolen the car keys to delay him from reaching the hospital on time, hoping he would die. The keys were in her possession, and she didn't give them to him. Her brother died on the way, and a few days later, Kanari threw the keys away in Ahmedabad to avoid suspicion. No one found anything odd about her brother's death, and they assumed he had died of a heart attack. Kanari then started giving the slow poison laced water to her sister-in-law as well. When she began feeling weak, Kanari gave her the poisoned water multiple times, after which the sister-in-law's health also deteriorated. On May 30th, she was taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, Kanari thought that if the 14-month-old niece Mahai survived, she might get a share of the property. Kanari then placed a cyanide capsule in Mahai's mouth while she was sleeping. As soon as the capsule dissolved in her mouth and went into her stomach, the baby started having seizures. Kanari told the family that Mahai was having seizures, and they rushed her to the hospital, where she died. The police found out about the whole story. During the house search, they found five red and two yellow capsules, along with a carving spatula and around 50 grams of plant seeds at two different places. Kanari's laptop was found with searches related to various poisons, the police filed a case, and after three years of proceedings, on April 4, 2022, the lower court sentenced Kanari Patel to life imprisonment for the murder of her brother and nephew, and attempted murder of her sister-in-law, with a fine of rupee 5 zozenze. She was to remain in jail as long as she lived. Later, Kanari sought to challenge the lower court's verdict in the high court. On December 26, 2022, she met with a lawyer named Middal Patel. The case went to the Gujarat High Court, where, on March 31, 2023, the High Court suspended the lower court's decision. Kanari was sent to judicial custody and was granted a temporary bail for three days. On April 3, she was released from jail. On April 4, Kanari's lawyer Middal Patel met her outside the High Court and instructed her to submit her passport to the Patent Sessions Court as per her bail conditions. Kanari agreed. Later that evening at 6.15 p.m., she met with her lawyer. WhatsApp too should be supported. The lawyer performed his legal duties well. However, she refuses to do this particular task. Then, Kanari Patel threatened Middal that she wouldn't pay your fees, and just like she killed her brother and nephew, she would also finish off your daughter. She still has poison with her. They had a heated argument. After that, on April 5th, Lawyer Middle went to the 16th police station and filed an fur against Kanari. Currently, Kanari Patel's case is ongoing in the High Court, and she is out on bail, even though she was granted bail again. Let's end the story here. Please comment and let us know how you found the video. Do like and share this video.
and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell icon. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.